Now if we take a look at lab 2a underscore embed underscore OS 6, it's running the latest version of embed OS at this point, and we're going to be doing all of our programming for all of our course using embed OS 6, because it's the most current version, the most up-to-date. Now if we look at our programming code here, you can see we're inputting something from the keyboard, we're going to echo it up to the screen and flush it to make sure it goes up there. And if we do that, we can say, hi there, how are you? When we hit the enter key, it does the line feed and a carriage return to move us back to here. Now what we're going to do is shorten this program up just a little bit. We're going to comment out this line. So it's put C is not going to echo characters to the screen anymore. And we can see that if we just run this new version of our code. And what we're going to do is we're not going to use the put C to echo things to the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to use our putty program here to do that. And that way we can actually shorten our code by at least one line in this particular case here. So let's take a look and see when it's running it, what it's going to do. So if I click here, hi there, how are you, nothing comes to the screen. And the reason for that, as I said, is because of the settings in PuTTY. So we can get rid of this one line if we make a couple of adjustments to our PuTTY program. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get out of PuTTY here. And we're going to launch it again and make some changes to what's in here. So you can see here that it's 9600 baud, which is the same baud rate as we have for Kyle Studio, which is great. We're going to go here to Terminal. And instead of force local echo off, we're going to force local echo on. So that's the equivalent of putting in the put character here. But the other thing that we want our putty program here to do is every time it gets a line feed is to generate a carriage return. So we've got a line feed. We know that's what's coming in when we hit the enter and we want a carriage return too. So the carriage turn back to the start and the line feed straight down. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to save our settings and say open. Now in this case, since we're still running our program, I can click here and say, hi there, how are you? And we can see that when we hit the enter key, it goes to the start of the same line and it's doing this with one less line of code. Now that we've reduced our code to the bare minimum here in Embed OS 6 to send characters to the screen by first getting them from the keyboard, echoing to the screen using the force local echo on, and also interpreting the enter key, which is a line feed is a line feed carriage return, all done now in PuTTY. The next thing to look at is how do we actually go about formatting the screen? And we're going to look at some basic things that you should be aware of from your previous programming course, but we're also going to look at something called ANSI escape sequences. Now ANSI escape sequences, we can use that to clear the screen in various ways. We can actually use it to position the cursor and we can also use it to change background and foreground screen colors and the attributes of the text that's on the screen, whether it's bold or faint or whatever. So let's take a look at some of that. So we're going to look at ANSI escape codes. And the best place to look here is ANSI escape codes for GitHub. And if we do that, we're going to find, first of all, something that you should be aware of from your PRG or programming course. For instance, if you want a beep to come up, Inside of printf, you'll put double quote, backslash a, double quote, and that will make a beep come up. If you want a backspace, and you want to type and then backspace up here, you can say printf, double quote, backslash b, double quote, and you'll see it actually, the curse will actually move back a space here. Now, one of the things you'll find, this is what you do when you're in C programming, and you can see quote, backslash r, quote here, is how you generate a carriage return, and uh, backslash n is how you do a line feed new line kind of thing in here as we've seen in tabs and so on you should have seen these already but if we're working with a program that takes keyboard input and puts it on the screen this is how you would generate these characters right from the keyboard now bell which is a little beep is seven in decimal the seventh character in the alphabet a b c d f g is a g so control g will generate a bell now backspace, which is a control H, because H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. So if I just go over here and type in something like hi there, or something like this, or hi here, and if I do a control H, every time I hit a control H, it actually backs up because control H is our backspace. Now backslash T, you should have seen before, which is a horizontal tab, 
And if we want to do that from the keyboard, it's Control I. So I do Control I, Control I, Control I. You can see that these are horizontal tabs. So these are the sorts of things that you can use right away, both in C and typing it in from the keyboard and going directly to the screen. So these are general ASCII codes, but I want to take a look at something different here. Let's take a look down here at erase functions. For instance, right now I'm going to use my cursor keys just to move myself up here and a little bit to the left. And what I'm going to see is I want to do things like I want to erase from the cursor until the end of the screen. That's escape, left square bracket, zero J. So I do escape, nothing happens, left square bracket, zero, capital J. Boom. Everything from the cursor to the bottom is erased. If I want to erase from the cursor to the beginning, I do escape, left square bracket, one, capital J. And again, nothing shows up until I do the capital J, and everything from the cursor to the top actually clears. Now, the one that we're going to use the most is this one, escape, left square bracket, two J, which erases the entire screen. Now, one other important thing that we can do is using cursor controls to position the cursor anywhere on our screen to update information that we're going to be displaying. Now, this screen is 24 rows this way by 80 columns this way. And as it says here, to get to any particular row or line and column, it's escape left square bracket, which line from 1 to 24 here, semicolon, and some column from 1 to 80, and then a capital H. So if I want to put it right in the middle, I'm going to press escape, nothing happens, left square bracket, which is typical of escape sequences. I want to go to row 12, which is halfway down, semicolon 40, and then shift capital H. And you can see here that I'm on row 12, column 40. So this is a way to actually position the cursor anywhere you like on the screen using this particular escape sequence. And we're going to come up with a position function to actually just give it a row and a column. And it's just going to put the cursor there so we can actually help ourselves format up information. Now before we look at colors in graphics mode, let's put our cursor back to the top left corner. Remember right now it's at row 12, column 40. We want to go to row 1, column 1. So to do that we hit escape, left square bracket row is row 1, semicolon 1 for the column, capital H, and we're at the top left. Now if we type in high there, you can see that the words high there are in faint text. And if we want to make it go bold, as it says set bold mode, we can say escape left square bracket one small m. So escape left square bracket one small m. And if we type anything from here on, it's going to be in bold mode. Now we also have the ability to say set blinking mode, which is escape left square bracket five small m. And things will start blinking here. But if we want to go back to something that's not blinking, we're going to have to do escape, let's go bracket zero small m first, and then high there so we get this, and then we can change it again to escape, let's go bracket one small m to actually have it then go bold. So once you set a mode, these things sort of add up, and you always have to go back to escape, let's go bracket zero small m to reset all modes, styles, and colors so that you can get back to a normal way of putting in text. Now one of the things we can do is we can change the color of our text. If we slide down here, we can see that foreground color is the actual color of our text here, and background color will be the color of our screen. So if we want to have our text coming up in, say, magenta, we can say escape, let's square bracket 35, small m, high, there, and we can see our text is now coming up in magenta. If we want to change that text color to, say, cyan, we'd say escape, let's square bracket, 36, small m. And we can see that we've changed our color again. So if we want to set everything back to normal, we can say escape, let's square bracket, 0, small m. And then, again, we're back to our typical uh, faint text that's sort of white. Now if we look up here, we can see that we have a number of colors that are background. So 30 is black text, 40 is black background. 31 is red text, 41 is red background. So let's take a look at just make our entire background blue. So if we do escape, let's square bracket 44 small m, 
And if at this point, form feed, which is control L, our entire screen is blue. Now it remembers the last color that we actually had for our foreground, so we start typing hi there. You can see our text here is in the same color as we last set it. So we have the ability to set whatever text color we want. We have the ability to set whatever background color we want. And we have the ability to position a cursor and to clear the screen. And these are all you really need to do some fancy screen formatting using ANSI escape sequences.